In this video, I'm gonna explain how to configure your projects and tasks add-on. Um, there's a lot of different options in projects and tasks. At the top here, you can decide the types of views you would like to enable for the system, whether you want the task list, the Gantt chart, the planning board, the status board, assignment board, and calendar views. If you uncheck these boxes, they will just disappear from all of your projects. This other option here has a whole other video on it, other intelligent scheduling. That's what most people want intelligent scheduling turned on. Work effort input. So with Project Insight, you can put in work as hours. That's our typical option where, you know, a task takes four hours to do or two hours to do. But we do option have optional story points and t-shirt sizes for those who are familiar with Agile and Scrum. I'm not going to get into details of what those things are. Normally, everyone just enters in their work hours. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Here's uh, work adjustment hours for multiple resources. So normally when you have a task that you set up and say this task is eight hours and you put someone on it, if you add another person, it would give the second person eight more hours. But you can choose it to say, uh, if the task was eight hours and I put somebody else on the task that I want the work to be divided between the two people. You can set that up for your, different, your default for when you add a new person to a task. Normally, when you, uh, you want the add and remove to be the same uh, option, that when you remove someone, we'll just divide the existing work evenly amongst the other people or add work proportionally. So we decrease or add work. These typically are uh, what these are all these options. Um, it, it depends on how you're turning, how you're putting someone on a task or not. And at the bottom, there's a couple options at the project level to show all related items of a parent summary task so, uh, or show the description. And this is so if you have a summary task, any de attachments to that summary task will appear on every child task in there. Same thing here, the description will appear on the child tasks. You can These are default off, but you can turn them on or off here. There's also task default settings. In the task default settings, you have options to auto-populate work from duration. That means that when you put the duration in, it'll say one day is eight hours. And you can also have it auto-populate the duration from work. Uh, so it'll do the flip side. Um, now, these two are on by default. Um, if you want to turn them off, it's really only for advanced project managers. Task scheduling options. I have a whole other video on what the default calculation type is. Normally when a task is created, you supply it the duration, five days, eight hours. We'll calculate that that's 20% uh, of someone's workday across the week. Also, there's a task constraint type default normally. Um, ASAP after task created is our default, which means if you start a task today and uh, there's no predecessors, the task will basically start today if you add one in today. Um, another default, which is more like Microsoft Project, is ASAP after the project start date. But our default is that it's both after the project start date and today being created. So normally, uh, that way it prevents you from putting a task in. If your project was three months ago and you add a task, it doesn't automatically calculate the task to start three months ago. That makes no sense. Task predecessor defaults to lag, so uh, you can turn it on so that it's either lead time or lag time when you put a predecessor in there. Normally a predecessor has no lead or lag, meaning there's none whatsoever, but if you put five days of lag in there, that means the next task will be five days. There's a gap between them. If you want lead time, then that task starts and overlaps its predecessor. So you can change that option here. For time entry and expense entry options, if you have those turned on, in your system, you can enable or disable the tasks to capture time. This is pretty much on all the time. But this is something clients change is whether or not the billable flag is on by default or not for a task. So if you're always doing billable time for a client, generally you have this billable flag turned on, but maybe you don't do that often, then you turn it off. Again, this only matters if you're using billable and um, actual time entries. This third one is whether or not the user can actually toggle billable or not. So if you want the project manager to dictate that this is a billable, these are billable tasks and the person can't turn it off, then that's what this does. And the same exact options 
for expenses on tasks are here. And when you want to go back to your project configuration, just click this button here and it takes you back to the screen I just um, explained a moment ago.